Hello everybody! In this video, I'll be discussing what we consider to be the top 5 resorts for early season skiing in Colorado, and what you can expect at each of them if you go during the early season. Early season skiing in Colorado extends from when the first ski area opens in late October, all the way through November until mid-December when school Christmas breaks are. If you don't understand the concept, just keep watching because it's pretty self-explanatory. This is the first of a two-part mini-series, the second of which will be a late season skier's guide to Colorado. So with that, let's begin an early season skier's guide to Colorado ski resorts. To start, we'll discuss the resort that is world renowned for having a long season, Arapaho Basin. Many people know Arapaho Basin as a great spring skiing area, and we'll certainly discuss that in the late season guide, but Arapaho Basin's high elevation allows it to fight for first opening every year through extensive snowmaking. The cold temperatures of being at such a high altitude allow Arapaho Basin to build a very solid artificial base, some of which ends up helping in the late season as well. The thing I love most about the legend in the early season is that they ensure a good coverage. As you'll hear later on, some ski areas will open runs with patchy cover or partial cover. Arapaho Basin typically starts with high noon, and when they open, it's sometimes only about two-thirds of the cut width of the run. Some years, though, they get it fully tree to tree for opening day. What you can count on is it being a full 18-inch base, and there definitely won't be any bare or patchy sections. It's still plenty wide for everybody, so don't worry about the width of the run. Do beware, though, that high noon is one of the shorter opening day runs around. That's pretty much the only downfall of Arapaho Basin's early season operation. Arapaho Basin has an indescribable vibe to it that you have to go to experience. And that vibe is present from day one, with people tailgating in the early riser lot, visitors dressing up in all sorts of silly costumes, and ski resort higher-ups out and about greeting people. It's by far the most fun opening day if you consider the whole experience. Strictly skiing-wise, maybe not so. You'll see as we go here that almost every ski area opens with blues, so if you're a beginner skier, you'll be best to wait until December rolls around. As they expand high noon to go tree to tree, the other blue, Ramrod, is quick to follow. The next to open is typically an early season terrain park somewhere up around the Black Mountain Lodge. This is another part of what makes Arapaho Basin great in the early season. It typically has a couple rails, boxes, and other small features. After the two lower mountain blues are complete, the team typically spends a night or two focusing on the beginner chairlift, Molly Hogan. Because the Molly area is so small, it can typically open after just a few nights of snowmaking. The next priority then becomes the upper mountain, with the Lenaway Face to Durkham's Gulch Trail opening next. Finally, the lower mountain greens, Sundance and Wrangler, are opened up and snowmaking is nearly complete. All of this happens through a couple weeks in mid to late October and early to mid November. By Thanksgiving in a typical year, everything that has snowmaking is open. Arapaho Basin starts getting natural snow early and often, but they don't typically get big storms until late November or even later. As such, the poly terrain, which relies on natural snow, typically opens just in time for the school holidays in December. The beavers and Zuma terrain typically open right around the new year. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how one of the smoothest early season operations around goes. Arapaho Basin opened on October 19th in 2018, October 11th in 2019, October 17th in 2021, and October 23rd in 2022. In those four seasons, Arapaho Basin won the race to opening twice. The other two? Well, they were won by Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek is located on the complete opposite side of the state from every other resort on this list. They are different than all of the others on this list because Wolf Creek has very minimal snowmaking. Its motto, the most snow in Colorado, is known all across the state and the country, and it's absolutely true. Wolf Creek has the absolute best and the absolute worst early season skiing in the state because of it. Here's how it works. Wolf Creek gets big storms, and I'm talking massive. Wolf Creek will get storms of several feet of snow as early as mid-October, and when those happen, they can open the ski area. All of it. Opening day at Wolf Creek is great because they open way more terrain than any other ski area that opens that early. And it's all powder skiing, of course. Now, the problems arise in the weeks after a big storm. See, the thing is with Wolf Creek, they get huge storms but then have huge breaks in between. And when it's the first big storm of the season, there's no established base underneath once the snow starts melting. Which means that in most years, by 4 or 5 days after opening day, the bare spots, poor snow, rocks, brush, and everything else are going to start showing up. 
Typically at that point, you'll see areas of the resort start to close, starting with this backside stuff. Alberta, Elma, and Charity are rare to see on opening week, but there have been a couple of years in which the snow was so good that the resort was 100% open within the first week. First to close on the front side will be the Bonanza chairlift, since it's pretty redundant with Raven next door. The next terrain to close, if necessary, will be the treasure chairlift, leaving just the Raven chairlift and these couple runs on the edge of the resort still open, along with the Nova chair and its bunny hill. I seem to recall a year in which the snow melted so fast that Wolf Creek had to fully close in the weeks after opening in weight of another storm, but I can't find any record of that happening upon a very superficial Google search. What I could find for sure was records of Wolf Creek only operating on weekends for a bit until a more substantial storm filled in their base. In short, Wolf Creek opening day is amazing, and probably the best opening day in Colorado, but unless there's another storm brewing, the following days and even weeks are not great. Wolf Creek opened on October 13th in 2018, November 1st in 2019, October 16th in 2021, and November 4th in 2022. Now, jumping back up to Summit County, let's discuss one of my more preferred early season ski areas, Copper Mountain. Copper Mountain typically opens a few weeks later than the other four areas on this list, but Copper is still a must on an early season list due to its sheer snowmaking might. Copper typically opens in early to mid-October just for race teams, so it's fun to tune into their webcams before any other ski area is open and dream of the skiing to be had in just a few weeks. Come opening day, Copper typically offers nearly top-to-bottom skiing from the top of Accelerator down into Center Village via some combination of these blues. One year, it was Ptarmigan to Rhapsody to Fair Play to Main Vein, but most years it's just Ptarmigan, Rhapsody, and Main Vein, and Fair Play is an additional run that opens in the week following opening day. The massive snowmaking capacity of Copper Mountain is on display in the weeks following opening day, as in the week or two they have until Thanksgiving, Copper is typically able to open Fair Play and or Bittersweeter Bouncer. Soon after, American Flyer opens with High Point to Carefree to Loverly. By the time the school Christmas breaks roll around in mid-December, Super B will be open with Andy's Encore, Skid Road, and Rosie's Run, Accelerator with Copperopolis and Ptarmigan, American Eagle with whatever runs that weren't open yet, Woodward with Vainglory as they build the park, Kokomo with Lower Roundabout, and Timberline with American Flyer and Windsong. And if they've had a lot of natural snow, you can expect even more terrain to be open, such as Collage, the Blacks and the Accelerator Pod, Coppertone, and other lower level terrain across the mountain. So yes, while Copper doesn't open as early as the other four on this list, it has a lot more snowmaking capacity and coverage, and as such, quickly passes the other resorts in open skiable acreage. For a Thanksgiving or late November trip, Copper is an absolute must, as it will have the most variety. Copper sometimes opens the Accelerator Blacks before December even rolls around, which means that they have some of the earliest advanced terrain to open in the state as well. Copper has a very large vertical, and thanks to the mammoth capacity of the Eagle and the Flyer, the ability to whisk skiers up to the higher elevation Accelerator and Timberline pods. I have found that the best snow to be found at Copper is at those higher elevations, along with on Main Vein, as it typically receives the deepest and most carefully built artificial base. While all runs open by snowmaking are icy, Copperopolis tends to be the worst of everything because of the racing done on it in October and early November. Copper opened on November 16th in 2018, November 8th in 2019, November 22nd in 2021, and November 12th in 2022. Next we have a ski resort that is renowned for many things, including its absolute train wreck of a trail called Schoolmarm. Of course, those of you who have watched the channel for a while know that I'm referring to Keystone. And yes, it's a personal disliking that I have for Schoolmarm, so don't let that opening statement deter you. Keystone is typically pretty competitive as far as being the first to open, but it hasn't been successful in the past couple years as far as winning the competition. The most notorious instance of Keystone placing second was in 2019. Keystone announced they would be open on the 12th of October, and at 1.38pm on October 11th, Al Henseroth posted that his Arapaho Basin would open that day from 3.30 to 5.30pm, beating out Keystone by a matter of hours. Keystone typically has one of the best opening day runs, with Schoolmarm being open tree to tree, lappable by the Montezuma Express chairlift. That means you'll have to take the gondola both ways, up at the start of the day and down at the end of the day until snowmaking is complete on the lower mountain runs. This is the only time that I'll concede that Schoolmarm is good, so pay attention. Schoolmarm is a great opening day run because it's long and wide. It's a long trail to go all the way along the ridge down and around to Montezuma. 
I don't typically like Skulmar because it's busy, but when the alternatives are everybody on High Noon at Arapaho Basin or everybody on Main Vein at Copper, I would prefer Skulmar because it's a bit wider than those runs and thus feels just a little less crowded. When everything is open at every resort and crowds spread out, I would still take literally anywhere else over Skulmarm though. The problem with Keystone in the early season is that after opening day, it takes Keystone a while longer to open a substantial amount of additional terrain, and when other runs do start to open, they're just offshoots of Skulmarm, which means that all of the crowds are still packed together at the top and bottom. At that point in the year, Keystone will have the likes of Skulmarm, Paymaster, Silverspoon, Last Chance, Jaybird, and Ina's Way open. Meanwhile, other resorts will have the same number of runs, but they'll all be in different pods as we saw with Copper, which really gives Copper more of a big mountain feel than Keystone at that point of the year. And Copper has less lift lines because it has more lifts open. Typically, Keystone finishes snowmaking with Spring Dipper, Durkham's Dash, and Mozart. At that point, all of those runs will be open, accessed by the Summit Express, River Run Gondola, Montezuma Express, Peru Express, and Ruby Express. I personally would much rather go to a place where I can go nearly boundary to boundary than be stuck practically in just one lift's pod. So while I would say that Keystone has one of the better opening day offerings, I would be hesitant to go in the weeks following. Keystone opened on November 7th in 2018, October 12th in 2019, October 22nd in 2021, and October 28th in 2022. And finally, we have Loveland. Loveland is tough because it's always getting little broed by the Summit County ski areas. It's rarely the first to open, never has the most terrain in the early season, and isn't exactly renowned for early season skiing. But I love it. And so do all of the Loveland locals who go back for it year after year. Loveland is typically third to open, depending on the status of Wolf Creek, as it is typically quick to follow after Arapahoe Basin and Keystone. It is one of few resorts that opens with a beginner run, as its opening day run is catwalk to mambo to home run, lapped by the Chet's Dream Chairlift. After that's open, it's typically a short eternity before any other substantial terrain opens. Yeah, Spillway and Upper Richards typically open within a week, and Chair 2 with Upper Home Run typically follows, but big expansions like Nick's Knox, Lower Richards, and Chair 6 are typically multiple weeks in development. Typically, I've found that Loveland rushes a little bit on the lower mountain, so the last stretch of Home Run into the base area can be a bit narrow and thin on opening day. This leads to Home Run being the focus of snowmaking for the first couple of nights after opening, and expanding terrain is put on the back burner for a while. So yeah, Loveland isn't exactly great as far as numbers go, but what's great about Loveland isn't numbers, it's people. Opening day at Loveland isn't near as crowded as at other resorts. Everybody's stoked to begin their season, but people aren't constantly in a rush to get somewhere or get as many laps as possible. It's a much more relaxed opening, and for many of us, that's all we're looking for. Loveland opened on October 20th in 2018, October 25th in 2019, October 30th in 2021, and November 3rd in 2022. That about wraps it up for the early season guide to Colorado skiing. Please leave any questions down below. Be sure to stick around until the late season when we'll release the late season skiers guide to Colorado. Go check out some of our other insiders guides or some of our other comparisons to be in the know about all that Colorado ski resorts offer. Thank you all so much for watching. Have fun out there this season. All my love, I'm out.